Uh, hey, we made it to Buena Vista, Colorado safely. And I spent a lot of time last night getting a little stir crazy thinking about all the local fishing and like, we fished here a good amount, but there's a lot of water that I still haven't explored. So today we are going to Antero Reservoir first. Now I've fished a little stretch of the plat that feeds into Antero before. And I know that in the fall, a lot of brown trout will run up from the reservoir into the creek. And I've seen some very large browns in there, you know, fish over 20 inches in a creek that's three foot wide. And so I was thinking about it last night. I mean, it was one in the morning and I'm laying in bed being like, well, I know those fish are in that reservoir and there's gotta be a way to catch them. So we're gonna go by there first today and see if we can do kind of a scouting mission and see if it's possible for us to catch some of those larger fish from the actual reservoir. Then we are going to check <laughs> out Creek, which we're driving kind of over right now. It's a tiny little stream. It's one of my favorite trout streams in the world and it's super small. We found it on accident maybe six or seven years ago while exploring the area. And at a lot of points it's this wide and then there's a lot of beaver dams. So we're gonna fish that. And then we're headed up into the mountains to go up to Cottonwood Lake and fish the creek that feeds into it for brook trout and rainbows and stuff. And someone told me yesterday that they had caught some lake trout in there, which I'd never heard of. And I spent a little bit trying to figure it out, but we're gonna go up there and I'm just gonna do my best to, to see if I can get one for myself. So we've got a pretty big day ahead of us. We got the dogs with us. They're hanging in the back. They do not care right now. And then Sweet Bean, man in the camera. So yeah, we're going to the res. Nice. Nice. Oh man, cool. Let me see it. Get down here without falling. Put my waders on so it doesn't me. So, so I am fishing with a one one twenty fifth olive marabou jig by PJ's finesse, just beneath a little indicator like a foot, and we're casting up these fish that are cruising through the shallows. This is my first one. I hooked one earlier, but it was on a bigger rig and I just did switch down to the finesse rig and caught this guy pretty quickly. Come on, bud. Let me get that jig out. Did that come out? He's just all tangled up. Yeah, it's already out of his mouth. Nice colors too. Just a beautiful fish. Come on, bud. severe thunderstorms uh, east of us. Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, look at that. 
Wow, colorful. What are they? They must have mice and shrimp here. Can you bring him over here? Yeah, hopefully in a moment. If I can get him in, he looks pretty fast. Okay. Uh-uh, get out. We'll see. Get it. Oh! oh, oh. Nice. <laughs> nice, babe. Over here. That's just a rainbow. Oh, he's got teeth. Yeah. He's got he's, teeth. He's crazy looking. He's missing his maxillary. Oh, that's what it is. Wow, he's big, though. Colorful, too. Yeah. Sit this rod down. He needs two bands. He's a fat fish. That's a 20 incher. Oh, yeah. Easily. There you go. And look at that tail. Is he a turbo? I don't really know how to recognize him that well. He just looks like a rainbow with spawning colors. I wonder if there's mysis in here. He's over 20. Or he's right at 20. Come on, bud. Murphy, I'll put you in this net. Look at that beautiful fish. Look at that color. Look how strong. <laughs> oh, oh fuck, I tripped. <laughs> uh, the net's over there. Okay. I'll go grab it. Okay. Murphy, no. Good sized fish. Hey, Murphy, heel. Come and get two more. Let me get Murphy. Murphy. Idiot. <laughs> You're so dumb, Murphy. <laughs> she just wants one so bad. This is Antero Reservoir. We are east about 20 minutes of Buena Vista or Buena Vista, depending on where you're from. It is a, oh wow, well, yellow headed blackbird. Very cool. Um, yeah, if you, uh, if you've never been here, it is just absolutely huge. It almost feels like you're fishing salt water because it's like sand bottom, not mud bottom. And there's rocks and you can see the water is crystal clear. So you can see all this structure out here and it just reminds me of flats fishing. So when we got here, it was very windy. And I mean, it's still pretty windy, but this isn't as bad. Is that a fish? No, that's not a fish. But yeah, I've mostly just been throwing one 125th ounce olive marabou jigs by PJ's Finesse on 5X under a small pinch on strike indicator. And it's done the trick so far. This place is awesome. It's just been a bunch of big, strong, healthy fish. So we're on one of my favorite little trout streams in America. It is tiny and it is full of wild brown trout. I 
was going to say the name of it, but I decided to keep it kind of secretive. Um, I mean, we found it and we're from Arkansas years ago very easily, so I'm sure it wouldn't be too hard. But it's like dry fly season here year round. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a beauty. Beautiful fish. How crazy is it to catch a fish that size out of a creek this tiny? And that's the second fish I missed out of this little run. I've got it in my head now because I got a rainbow and a brown already and we're talking about running up in the mountains that we might be able to get a grand slam today if we get a brook trout and a cutthroat, but we'll see. <laughs> Seeing how small that fish looked in the water and how big he was when I pulled him out really lets me know that some of these fish I've been spooking in this tiny creek are in the 15 to 16 inch range, which is crazy because how small it is. So that means that somewhere in this whole thing, there's some beaver ponds in there, there's got to be some 20 inchers. I'm going to dedicate some time while we're in town this week to finding a few. We were catching browns at that little creek and I had this idea because I had a big rainbow and a nice little brown and I was like, what if I could get a Grand Slam in like the Buena Vista area? Now a Grand Slam is catching all four species of trout. So you're looking at brook trout, cutthroats, rainbows and browns. And I was like, oh, I've already checked two boxes. Brook trout are really easy to find here. Cutthroats, that's the hard one. Someone online had tipped me to a little stream that had cutthroats and potentially if we walk far enough up some greenback cutthroat which are protected species they're colorado state fish <sighs> man this altitude is killing me <laughs> but we're, we're at like 11,000 foot right now or something and we've just been walking uphill and, and cut yeah uphill and just coming from <laughs> arkansas this is way different i feel like i'm going to be olympic ready when i get home but this is the first hole i'm going to fish in an area that might have cutthroat in it and if, you know, if not here, we're going to walk a while and find another one. <sighs> going for the Grand Slam. Here we go. Oh, no, that looks like a brookie. Yeah. Yep, there's a brook trout. Oh, it's a pretty brookie. 
<laughs> when you're hoping for a cutthroat, it's hard to get excited about such a pretty fish. I hate that I put this goal on my day. Because man, what a pretty fish. Come here, buddy. Let me get that out of there. Come on. He's got his little teeth stuck on my finger now. Oh, there's a tag. Oh, there he is. That's a little guy. Ripped it right out of his mouth. I'm getting grabs every cast. They're just small. Oh, there he goes. Also a bird trout. So what I'm doing is I'm dropping this 1 16th out white jig down in the water. Come on, buddy. Open up. He's got it good and hooked in there. Come on. Cute. He's got his little teeth every time. Look. There. Oh, my goodness. He's so cute. Murphy, stay. So I'm throwing this little 1 16th out white jig. I'm just tossing it over, let it sink. I'll bounce it twice and let it sink. And then they're grabbing it on the sink. And because it's white and this water's pretty clear, it's like a one, two, stop, one, two, stop. Because it's white and the water's pretty clear, I can see it. And so you'll be doing that and then you'll watch your jig kind of shoot over or just disappear and you just set the hook. Um, this works for pretty much any small stream, especially this time of year when the fish are moving a little slower because the water's still really cold because um, it promises them a lot of protein. So with these jigs, you're doing like a one, two and drop. So you bounce, bounce and let it sink. Bounce, bounce and let it sink and the current's pulling it back down. And nine times out of 10, the fish is gonna grab it on the drop. Now, if you can't see it, that drop can be kind of dangerous because you won't feel the fish pull if he grabs it and spits it. But if you can get eyes on your fly, it'll work. <laughs> there we go. That'll catch one. Dog. All right. They're all beautiful fish though. You okay, but you look like you're dying. It's perfect. All right, cool. Thank you, Bean.
another crosser. Got your glasses? Put them in a pocket. Now that I know there's rookies this high up, though, could have just been a brook trout. Yeah, but it could be a could since be a it's bed. a little slower over there. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> All right, so we walked very far. I thought that we had started up higher. I think we went up to like 10,800. And uh, now we're headed back. I have not gotten my cutthroat yet. Caught some brook trout. Thought we'd keep walking until we'd get above the brook trout and then kept catching brook trout, which is, you know, you don't want to be frustrated about a fish like that, but it's frustrating when you're trying to find a cutthroat. But there is a beaver pond we passed on the way up. I'm going to stop and check it out and then uh, get back to the car because I think we've done about seven miles round trip. We walk so much and we forgot to eat lunch. We finally sit down to eat lunch and there's this beaver pond in front of us. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go out and fish it. I had intention of fishing all the way back down and I didn't earlier because I didn't want to get my feet wet. But I had to walk through the creek up there. So I come over here, I make one roll cast. I catch a little tiny brook trout. I make a second roll cast and I get my cutthroat. Let me see, come here, buddy. Come here, it's okay. Come on, check that out. Oh my goodness, he is beautiful too. Beautiful fish. Hold him up in the light. I want to take a photo of him because I don't think I've ever caught one before. Now I honestly don't know enough about cutthroat to know if this is a greenback or not. I know like Snake Rivers and I, I think it's a greenback. I've tattooed a few and from what I think, I'm like, 95% sure it is, but I, you know, someone could probably correct me. But I, I sure think it is. I'm gonna take a photo of it and verify. Come here, buddy. You hold it? Come on, come on. I'm trying to give you, give you some water, bud. I know. Man, what a beautiful fish. Okay, let's get you out there safely. Yellow fins, his fins yeah. are yellow. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I did it. Yeah. Oh, I'm so stoked. Grand Slam. Grand Slam. <laughs> Watch your shoes in that mud. Okay. All right, here we go. Check this out, Pete. See if I can do it again, now that I know they're here. So cool. You see a fish? My jig disappeared. It's a white jig, you know, so you see it moving in the water. All right. Oh, there's a touch. Man, I saw the flash. Oh no. I'm stuck on that. Got a little stick. Got there you off go. Of it and it put me right back on it. No, you're good. Oh, there it is. That looks like a brookie. Oh yeah. They're like coral right now. Yeah, yeah. I ah, saw that look at this crazy. When I saw that cutthroat coming in, you know, he had a little bit of color on him, and I was like, ah, uh, it's a nice brookie. Oh, man. Nope, just a nice I cutie. feel so much relief. 
Yeah, I do too. Like, that... It's funny because I have had such a good day and such a good time fishing in the area. But, and I never set goals for myself like that, but whenever I set the goal of being like, I want to do a Grand Slam video, I just put like this, like, I gotta get them thing on my, on my plate. Perfect. Well, and after that kind of hike, you know? Yeah. You deserve like a reward. <laughs> yeah. Cause that was not easy. Across the field. Oh, nice. Another brookie. Yeah, you got the color. Murphy, come on up here on land. Come on. Come here, Murph. Come on. Get out of the water. I'm Murphy, to come, on. come on. Come here, Murphy. On, Murphy. Murphy. Come on. Murphy. Heel. Heel. Over here. Murphy. Over here. Shit. She goes. No. Stay. Oh, 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 okay, he's just a little more dull. Murphy Lee, get back over here. <laughs> she seems to take it down. Come on, you little shit, get over here. Come on, lay in the grass and be good, like Cody. <laughs> I feel now that I got my cutthroat, got the grand slam, I feel like more excited about the brookies to stay Murph. Oh yeah, like, for sure. Because for a minute there, it was like anytime I'd catch one, I'd be like, oh no, not a cutthroat. You know, the first one of the day a was a nice thing, but after that, it was like, oh no, it's not a cutthroat. And now I feel a lot of relief and I feel like I can appreciate them again. Oh, ooh, there you go. just like a little pot of them down there. Oh, that was cool. That might be... That's a brickie. Is that yeah. hard to tell? You just get little flashes of their coral color. Yeah, Oops. Murphy, out of the water. Come on, Murphy. Come on, Murphy. Out of the water. Let's go. Come on. Go on. Go. Go on. Oh my goodness. Murphy. Lort. Look at you. You should be ashamed. <laughs> Come here. Go on, Murph. No. She's in your line. Come on, Murph. Let's go. Get you out of there. Up here. Good. All right. Come on, cut the It's funny after walking. I'm so glad I, you got one. I'm so happy. Like, I have such relief. <sighs> oh, the tap. Oh, there's a fish. Bricky. It's really cool, like, being able to stand up and just, like, watching them, like... Hey, that's a great one. This is a pretty one, too. It's got the colors. Murph, every time, get out of the water. <laughs> Murphy, come on. You're not in trouble. You just got to get out of the water. You're going to look at all ashamed in your little vest. Stay. You got that thing in there pretty good. Day. Come on, bud. Check that out. That's a beautiful fish. Let me back up Hold just that. a little bit so you can have a full video of me really soon. Cool. Yep. That one we did it in bands. Oh yeah, yeah, that is important. So we got the Grand Slam and that was cool, but the coolest thing about it is that we did it while wearing Vans <laughs> the whole time. So, you know, no waiting really. It was all from shore and no waders, no swimsuits, no wet wading shoes or any of that. We did get our Vans wet at the top of the hike because we just ended up in some marshy stuff. But ultimately we hiked a mountain and got a grand slam at several different water places, you know, like bodies of water, all while wearing vans, which I thought was a, a fun thing. 
Our feet hurt though. Our feet were miserable at the end <laughs> of the day. Uh, so camper is set up really nice right now. The Airstream's looking good. Bean's been just, she runs such a tight ship. Here's some of our little artifacts from the other day. Like this little Jasper. Oh, it's so dark in here right now. It's because that door's open. So the light I'll is... The just, I'm just gonna close the door for a second. Okay. Ooh, come on. Okay, Let's see if that helps. I feel like sometimes the contrast, yeah, dude, it changes so quick. All right, so here's one of our little artifacts, this little piece of Jasper. It's not really worked into anything, but it's uh, it was worked at one point. So I don't feel so bad about making this mine. Pretty cool. All right, so the trailer is looking good. It's been lived in pretty well. Show you back to the bedroom. Um, we've slept really well since we've been here. Now we do have this little noise machine that sits down here in the corner and that does drown out all you know the surrounding area little humidifier over there as well as a heater our furnace for the camper dries us out pretty good and we're already in such a dry climate like we were at breakfast this morning and my nose just started pouring blood that hasn't happened in a long time but that humidifier has made a big difference we got the ring doorbell set up this week so we can watch our pets and say things to them if we need to while we're gone <laughs> let's see i think that's about it yeah so we're heading to denver today and i will be painting a very large taxidermied shark at golden fly shop tomorrow mm -hmm. to look like it's it's like a great white it's like 10 or 12 foot and i'm painting it to look like a cutthroat trout i've never done anything like this and I am pretty nervous because it's it's a new thing. I don't know anything about the application. I'm just gonna go there and go for it and hopefully don't ruin this thing. They're doing an event around it. So not only am I doing something I've never done, I'm doing it in front of a bunch of strangers and that's super intimidating, but I think it'll be okay. You know, you just cross your finger and hope for the best. This week has just been, this whole month has been a cool month. This week has been really good. I've gotten to take a lot of my clients fishing which is neat because it's it's bodies of water that are new to me. And so to be able to tattoo someone and then take them somewhere that I've barely fished and put them on like a pretty nice fish is cool. Like this guy, Seth, um, got this really neat coffee tattoo of a brown trout diving into coffee. And then immediately afterwards, I took him out to Clear Creek Reservoir and put him on a 22 inch rainbow. And that was really neat. Had a guy, Kyle, come down from Silverthorn and we went out and he got a really, got to get a, got a nice fish in. Um, big old fat hen, probably about 21 inches. And then put uh, like a cut bow chasing a streamer on his arm. So it's just been a really good week for tattooing, for fishing. Airstream life's been pretty good. We Our neighbor does have a dog that barks nonstop. And... He's a full-time resident here at the RV park. That happens, you know, and it's, it's just, just gotten too comfortable. Yeah, he's just a little comfortable here. But that's just kind of how it goes when you stay in an RV park. Hopefully after Fort Collins, we're going to start staying more at state parks. After Fort Collins, I'm not going to tattoo for a while. So our trips are going to be a lot less structured. It's just going to be about going places we want to be for a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Take care. Be safe. Bye.